Hi folks, uh, my name is Casey Woods. I'm an actor, comic. Uh, I pretty much my main concentrations have been live theater, improv comedy, and as of recently, stand up as well. I've only been doing stand up sort of, you know, consistently now for about half a year, but definitely during some of those early months, I would come to a mic not as prepared as I would have liked to be. And let's say like two, three minutes, you know, let's say like two minutes into my, into my five, I blank, right? I'm like, oh, I have no idea where I was going. I lost my train of thought. I'm up here. I don't want to like go into my phone and like, you know, completely, you know, uh, sort of cease my momentum. So, you know, you, you kind of have to use those improv skills if you want to, if you want to continue the set. You know, like I've done, I've done that once or twice where I'm like, oh, I think of a, I think a joke here is funny, but I don't, I don't really have anything for it, but it's good to have in like the back pocket. I mean, especially as well, like, I mean, like if you have like a heckler or something like that doesn't really, I found that like in a sort of open mic environment, there aren't like a, there aren't really a lot of hecklers cause it's mostly other comics, <laughs> but, um, I don't know. I really do like, I, sometimes I kind of like that exchange. Like if there's somebody that says something from the audience and then it's like, oh, all right, well, let's see where this goes. You know, I'm the one with the microphone, so I'll, I'll, I'll be okay, but <laughs> I can say whatever I want. But yeah, I, I do think that those improv skills, you should, you should definitely be ready to use them on stage. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't go up there, you know, just with like, you know, with your written material uh, ready for that and nothing else. You know, I think you should always be prepared because it's more fun that way. <laughs> I was part of a I was part of a play here in Lowell uh, with the Free Soil Arts Collective called The Cookie Referendum. It was a short play, a sort of farce on the two party system and the electoral process. It was written by a friend of mine, Ray Sam Donko Holm. He's a fantastic. Uh, creative and this was his first play uh, and it was so cool because it was a first time playwright putting the show on and it's a it's about a middle school class election so all the student act all the students in the play all the student characters were played by student actors by you know middle schoolers and high schoolers so I, I was one of three <laughs> adults in that entire production so I was super proud of that project as well. I mean, it was like my first like paid acting acting gig in a in a long time. So that the, the check was really the check was really nice. I was real proud of 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 seeing that check. I, I, I like I like took a picture of it. I was like, that's nice. I mean, I want to remember this, but I got to teach a lot of those kids a lot of improv fundamentals during that process as well because it was an immersive play. It was an immersive experience. Like we wanted to be ready for people from the audience throwing out interjections. So we ran a lot of scenarios during that show. And I think, I don't know, I'm definitely proud to have imparted uh, some of those improv principles on those kids because they have like, they have, they have some bright, performative futures ahead of them real funny real funny group my favorite part of performing is almost like a it's i don't want to say it's like a i don't want to say it's like a selfish or or, or like a or a self-motivated um answer but what i love perform what i what i love most about performing is the fact that like uh just kind of knowing like in in no no knowing in my own heart that this is like kind of what I'm what I'm best at doing, you know, <laughs> you know, like you know, we as people, like I'm not, you know, I'm 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 the, I'm guys, I'm not perfect, <laughs> you know. That's all. That's a terrible. That's obviously like a cliche, but yeah, I'm not great at a lot. You know, this is like one of the you know one of the few things that I do really um, pride myself on, and I look forward to each time I get to perform, whether it's a play or it's stand up or improv, whatever. It can even be music as well. I've done some, I've done some little projects here and there. Yeah, I guess it's just the, I guess I would say my favorite part of performing is the gratefulness that comes, that you need, that, I guess that you need to recognize, I think, 
when you're performing because if you're not grateful you know for the experience you know of just being there of just being on stage like because you know it's it's hard to get up there it's hard to get up you got to think about what brought you there and you got to think about the journey like i guess what motivated the shift for me when it came to acting to stand up is that stand up had always been something that i wanted to do like i like i like <laughs> i did i had like a lot of like uh i had a lot of like uh unrestricted access to like cable tv <laughs> growing up so like i watched a lot of comedy central a lot of adult swim uh in like that formative like age of like close to like you know 10 12 11 and i got introduced to a lot of really good stand up comedy because of that like they used to have they used to have this like half hour program where it would just be stand ups you know up and coming stand ups doing their half hours and i really loved it so much and like that was something i wanted to do but i was just kind of, i i was so nervous about the idea of that and like i would say to myself like oh well you know you're not funny enough to actually be a stand up comedian you know this is like what you tell yourself because you're scared of it you know and you're intimidated by the by by the concept of going up there with just yourself and your own material but like it's a silly thing to say to yourself like i mean for year for years i did not acknowledge that those aspirations of mine and that it was something that I, that I actually wanted to do. And like, yeah, I just kind of, I, I think I kind of wanted to just kind of reconnect to that, <laughs> to that love of stand up that I had discovered when at that, at that formative age in my life. And I wanted to do something new and from a lazy, from a, from a lazy perspective, I wanted to, you know, engage in some art that didn't really have to do with line memorization. What I love about comedy it, as opposed to acting is that, you know, for a lot of, a lot of times acting is trans, you know, it, it's inherently transformative, right? The idea is that you want to, I guess, sort of let go of, you know, yourself, let go of yourself, get out of yourself so you can make that transformation and become the character, become that different person. You know, you are still you foundationally and you can use the foundations of your personality to build that character into a new person. But ideally, you're not, you're not you on stage. You're, you're the character versus stand up. You want to hold on to those things, you know, like theater. I said this before, but like theater is an environment of instant forgiveness where like you can be silly, you can make mistakes. Stand up, it almost seems like it's the opposite of that. Like never forgive, never forget so that, you know, you can use that as material later, you know, like you are so yourself on stage. You want, you don't want to be any, you don't want to be anyone but yourself on stage. I think Lowell is definitely, definitely unique. It's a, it's a, it's a unique type of, of, of city because I mean, like Jack Kerouac famously said, Lowell is a town and a city, you know? It's a, it's, you know, is it a small city or is it a big town? You know, it's kind of both. So that's what I really like about Lowell is that like the artistic community, it's almost like everybody kind of knows each other, at least in some way. Everybody knows each other or at least knows one person that knows someone else. You know, like if you were to like make a web of all the different sort of connections of people operating now in the art scene, or at least like in the last sort of five, six years that I've been active in the art scene here in Lowell. Yeah, like it's so, that's what I love about it is that it's so, it's so, together you know it's it, it is really like a web and i mean as opposed to like a place like boston or new york you know these cities that are so huge right like you know you're not gonna it's hard to sort of um establish that uh, sense of of community in a large metropolitan area like that so i guess that's one of the advantages that lowell has you know it's a city it's cool it's you know whatever but uh <laughs> you know it's just small enough that you can establish really good um, connections with the people that are doing the same thing and there's no like there's no competitive sort of um, elements or at least there shouldn't be i haven't really <laughs> i don't really i don't really get competitive when it comes to stuff like that and i don't i haven't really run into any of that 
you know, which I think is, I think is great. Sometimes you have shows that are like, oh, these shows are going on at the same time, you know, same weekend, which one am I going to be able to see? That's fine. You know, you just, well, you know, you just catch the next one or the one that you didn't see. I mean, ways that I would love to see Lowell grow and change is pro is definitely uh, accessibility to like um, affordable housing in Lowell, especially like in the downtown area. You know, I've lived downtown my whole life. You know, it's now getting to the point where like if I were to move, like I live, you know, like I live with my family. If I were to find, if I were to try and find a place outside of like the the place that we rent that we've been renting now for the last like seven or so years, you know, I definitely like nothing downtown is like in my price range at all, you know, like let alone Lowell generally, like I don't want, uh, I guess I, I would like, I would like to see, I guess I would like to see Lowell, I sort of make an effort to not just let gentrification consume the entire city or at least the entirety of the downtown area, which I've definitely been noticing the last couple years, you know, with the new justice center, the new, you know, huge parking lot that's there. I don't want, uh, you know, I, I would hate for Lowell to become like, uh, like a little Boston, you know, in that sense, like we don't want like a, this, this, this can't be like another back bay and <laughs> that would be awful. <laughs> so yeah, I guess the, that's, that would be, that's what I want. I want this to be a place where these underground, you know, communities, you know, can still thrive and be a cool place for artists. And even, you know, it might not, then, then we might even become, if we could gain enough ground where we won't even, we won't even be underground, it's just like more like in your face, that would, that would be great.